Good evening. You're watching the news from the Sultanate of Oman Television. First, the headlines. The Ministry of Heritage and Culture is exerting great efforts to enlist Kalhat Archaeological City on UNESCO's World Heritage List. The Higher Education Admissions Center announces the starting of registration within the e-admission system for the second sort out for the academic year 2016-2017. And the Daba port in the governorate of Musandam witnesses an active commercial movement while receiving a number of tourist ships and ferries. Those were the headlines and now for the news in detail. The Ministry of Heritage and Culture is working on completing the file of listing Kalhat Archaeological City on UNESCO's World Heritage List to be added to the other four Omani archaeological sites previously included. Kalhat City, which is located in the Wilaya of Sur in the Governorate of South Sharkia, is one of the oldest cities and ports in Oman that played a preeminent role in the regional Omani history. It was known for its famous Bibi Maryam shrine. Its port used to export purebred Arabian horses to India's markets. Its unique architectural buildings portraying different civilizations in addition to its political role in the different stages of the history. The city was hit by a tremor at the end of the 15th decade, affecting large parts of it. Her Excellency Dr. Rawia bin Saud al busaidia Minister of Higher Education, issued a ministerial decision to establish Muscat University. The university, which will be based in the governorate of Muscat, will provide a number of academic programs through the three colleges, namely the College of Business and Management, College of Engineering and Technology, and College of Transport and Logistics Services. The university will accept Omani and foreign students, holders of general education diploma or equivalent, according to the terms approved by the university's council, as well as the laws and regulations in force. Sultan Qaboos University SQU received a new batch of students for the academic year 2016-2017. Activities of the induction week for the new students began at the Cultural Center in the Grand Hall to complete different procedures for receiving the new batch. During the induction week, the students will get acquainted with the university campus, the academic aspects, as well as the cultural, sports, religious, social and various other programs of the university. The vice chancellor of SQU will also meet the new students during the introductory week at the open theater. The students will also meet deans and academic staff in their colleges. The Higher Education Admission Center announced the starting of registration within the e-admission system for the last sorting out for the academic year 2016-2017. From tomorrow, Monday, and until next Thursday, all students who registered earlier or have not registered can apply for the vacant programs. The results will be announced on the center's website on 1st of September 2016. The Daba port in the governorate of Musandam witnesses an active commercial movement where it receives a number of tourist ships and ferries. However, the citizens in the area, especially the fishermen, call on bodies concerned to expand the port due to the problems they face in the docking area, where they can't find a spot for their boats. This issue also caused some fishermen to stop venturing into the sea. Expanding the Daba port could solve a lot of problems in addition to facilitating ship movement and provide the opportunity for domestic and regional commercial ships to benefit from the services of the port more efficiently. Still to come in our news bulletin, 
In Hong Kong, it is milk tea, a potent heat of caffeine and tannin rooted in its colonial British past. العالقة بالذاكرة تأخذنا دهشة مختلفة لتبهرنا بجمالها الآسر حيث ملتقى الأسرة امنح نفسك شغف التجربة فهنا حكاية الجمال لا تنتهي مهرجان صلاة السياحي 2016 من الخامس عشر من يوليو إلى الحادي والثلاثين من أغسطس عمان المحبة والوئام Welcome back to the news from the Sultanate of Oman Television Health awareness sessions and meetings with the community topped the events of INAYA or CARE initiative, which was supported by the National Youth Commission. The event included awareness sessions that covered various health topics, namely genetic blood diseases and youth daily health patterns. The initiative aimed to uplift youth's health awareness through these sessions, which were presented by health specialists. The initiative also provided a number of programs, namely No More, which focused on a number of health issues, and Warda or Rose program, which discussed women health issues. Aiming to improve the professional development of teachers as well as their scientific and educational skills, Sultan Qaboos Higher Center for Culture and Science organized the seventh educational forum for faculty and associated functions. The three-day forum entitled Knowledge and Growth will discuss general and specialized work papers. The forum discussed a number of topics such as instilling citizenship values and the role of educational institutions in activating those values. To fall Al Yafaya, a woman from the Wilaya of Taka in the governorate of Dofar, is interested in collecting traditional artifacts. Some of the objects date back to hundreds of years and embody the Omani connection to the heritage. She has built a special room made out of palm fronds, animal skins and pottery. The room was built to store the handicrafts. Besides artifacts, she is also keeping traditional clothes for men and women and jewelry items, in addition to items made out of clay. She inherited this hobby from her mother. Hundreds of Syrian rebels are preparing to launch an operation to recapture a town held by Daesh at the border with Turkey. A Sir senior Syrian rebel who is familiar with the plans said today that the rebels, Turkey-backed groups fighting under the banner of the Free Syrian Army, are expected to assault Jarablus from inside Turkey in the next few days. Jarablus, located on the western bank of the Euphrates River, is the last significant town held by the militant group on Syria's border with Turkey. It is 54 kilometers east of Al Rey, a border town the same rebel groups recently took from Daesh. The death toll from a suspected suicide bomb attack in the southeastern Turkish city of Guanzdep near the Syrian border has risen to 50. Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan said it was likely the Daesh militants had carried out the late night attack when the bomb exploded among people celebrating a wedding. The local governor's office said in a statement that 50 people were killed in the bombing and more wounded were still being treated in hospitals around the province.
Firefighters said a Southern California wildfire mostly surrounded, allowing thousands of evacuated residents to return to their houses as another fire further north moved perilously close to the historic Hearst Castle. The Blue Cut Fire, named after a narrow gorge where it ignited about 120 kilometers northeast of Los Angeles on Tuesday in an area called the Cajon Pass, has burned more than 15,000 hectares and destroyed 105 homes and 213 outbuildings. At its height, the blaze forced authorities to order more than 80,000 residents to evacuate their homes. Officials said residents of 7,000 other homes in the Cajon Pass were still potentially in the path of the fire, which is burning in heavy brush, and they remained under evacuation orders. Nearly 2,700 firefighters and crew were battling the wildfire, their efforts amplified by more than two dozen water-dropping airplanes and helicopters. Some cities are fueled by coffee. In Hong Kong, it's milk tea that keeps things running. A potent nostalgia-infused ca caffeine hit with fierce competition to brew the best in town. Here's a report. Brewing up a city staple. Some cities may run on coffee, but in Hong Kong it is milk tea. A potent hit of caffeine and tannin that is rooted in its colonial British past. This no frills cafe in the heart of the city, is famed for its version. A blend of loose black tea is repeatedly strained through a signature sock-like sieve before being served with a dash of concentrated milk. We don't really have a record of how many cups of milk tea we sell. We sell as much as we can. It's tough work, but we sell at least a few hundred a day. The drink is taken so seriously here that the city stages an annual international competition to find the best milk tea master. This year, finalists from China, Australia and Canada put their brewing skills to the test in front of 14 judges. But it was a local tea maker with 22 years of experience who took the first prize. Besides the colour, aroma and taste, a good milk tea should have a dense texture and the fragrance of the tea. The Oxford English Dictionary added milk tea to a list of new entries this year. And it is also on the city's intangible cultural heritage list. Unsurprisingly, trying stocking tea, as it is also called, is on many tourist itineraries. You can't really get it um, in anywhere in uh, the Western countries because it's a mixture of uh, milk and tea and um, it's not very, um, it's very smooth, it's not very thick, so um, I mean it's something sweet, so it's something very special over here, yeah. Hong Kong has gulped down some 2.5 million cups every day according to the local coffee and tea association. Revving up the city's engine, one brew at a time. And now for the general weather forecast around the Sultanate. Cloudy skies will prevail over the coastal areas of the Governorate of Dofar and its nearby mountains with intermittent drizzle. The rest of the Sultanate will have clear skies with cloud accumulation over the Hajar Mountains. Low clouds and fog late at night and early morning are expected over the coastal areas. Winds will be northeasterly to easterly light to moderate over the coasts of Sea of Oman, while on the coastal areas of the Arabian Sea, it will be southwesterly moderate to active. Seas will be rough along the coast of the Arabian Sea with a maximum wave height of 4 meters and slight to moderate along the rest of the coast with a maximum wave height of 1.25 meters.
This is the South End of Oman Television. Before we end tonight's bulletin, here are the main points once again. The Ministry of Heritage and Culture is exerting great efforts to enlist Kalhat Archaeological City on UNESCO's World Heritage List. The Higher Education Admission Center announces the starting of registration within the e-admission system for the second sort out for the academic year 2016-2017. And the Daba port in the governorate of Musandam witnesses an active commercial movement while receiving a number of tourist ships and ferries. With that, we come to the end of tonight's news bulletin. From all of us here at the newsroom and the studios, it's good night.